So I, I have the challenge of uh, trying to get to put a keynote into two lightning talks and a fireside chat, so bear with me. Um, so hands up. Who, is, who used a taxi or got a taxi as part of their, their trip here over the last couple of days? OK. Um, normally when I do this, I do this in Orlando, where most people have had to wait for two hours for a taxi the night before. So the, the point here is that you know, digital disruption is, is impacting every single industry, right? So you know, the taxi industry hasn't changed in certainly in the last 20 years, some would say in the last 200 years, right? I mean, yes, you used to get a horse and cart, and now it's a, it's a taxi. But what are we seeing? In the last four years, Uber has come from nowhere to disrupting an industry. Um, it's also disrupting transportation logistics. Um, so we're seeing dramatic change. And I think the, the point I wanted to make here um, is that you know, change is happening everywhere. Um, as customers, as partners, we really need to sort of assess how digital transformation will impact our business. Um, Back in 2005, I was on a business trip in Boston, and uh, we drove past a Blockbuster. I don't know if everyone remembers Blockbuster as the video store. Um, and the taxi driver sort of said to me, he said, he knew I was a financial analyst. He said, would you invest in this business? And I said, no. And he said, why? And I said, because Netflix is going to basically take their market away. At that time, Netflix was shipping DVDs in the post, if you remember. Now they've totally transformed that. What he didn't realize was that his shield, which he paid a million US dollars for, had just risen to 1.2 million in 2005 and is now worth about $500,000 because Uber has totally disrupted his marketplace, right? So this is the impact um, that this is having. And you know, from, from, from our perspective, what, what we want to, to talk about and, and hopefully sort of discuss is, is this is an ecosystem game, right? So digital transformation cannot be done by one vendor. It has to be done by an ecosystem pulling together to enable companies to transform, to change their business models, to change their business best practice in a very agile and effective way. This is, this is one of my sort of favorite slides because I can look out and say, you know, 40% of your businesses will probably be dead um, in the next 10 years. Um, you know, we've, we're seeing the, the average age of organizations change quite dramatically, right? So they've fallen from 65 years uh, for the global 500 or the Fortune 500 um, to 15 years, and it's soon going to be less than 10, right? This, this change is having a huge impact, as I mentioned, on every particular business, every um, type of opportunity. Everyone knows the stories around Uber and Facebook and Airbnb, right? The, the, thing, the benefit they had is they didn't have to escape legacy. Right? They were all able to start afresh. They were able to build out these cloud solutions, these cloud scenarios. Um, they were, yes, able to take advantage of platform to dig digitally disrupt, but they didn't have to escape legacy. So how do, how do we do this in the context of the business that we all operate in, where we do have SAP as the, at the back end, or we do have Oracle at the back end, we do have a huge amount of, of custom development um, applications that not only do we need to look at how do we migrate, but how do we now extend and, and start to build um, these new business capabilities. You're probably all expecting this to be a, a metaphor around sort of two-pace IT in terms of, you know, we need to manage the requirements of, of the business, and we do that through an agile pace layer. We do that with platform as a service. We do that with Cloud Foundry. Um, but we need to keep this in the context of, you know, your rock solid core, your, your, your stable IT requirements where you need to really support the, the business, but keep it up and keep it up at a, at a, at a high level. Um, it's true in part. Really, this is an aid memoir for me. I'm sort of doing a, a half marathon uh, next, next Sunday. And it's to remind me that you know, to run fast or to run further, I need to run fast, right? So the, the analog is there in terms of you know, we do need to think about how do we bring both of these capabilities together? How do we make sure that, that as an organization, we e extend from the business data, we extend from, from that stable core, um, but we get the benefits of pace layering. We get the, the, the benefit of, of this sort of bimodal IT requirement that Gartner likes to talk about. And this is something that, 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 that we think will enable customers to transform, right? If I think in the context of IoT or Industry 4.0, 
Often it's extensions of existing business processes, right? We're connecting to new data sources, but we're using it still to optimize the supply chain, or we're using it to better manage our inventory levels, right? So ultimately, it is an extensibility play. Um, so this is why you cannot escape legacy. You have to do this in the context um, of the legacy systems, of the legacy capabilities um, that as a customer you have, um, and as ecosystem players, we all need to take advantage of. So if this is, if, if digital transformation is ultimately an extensibility game, you, you, you need to connect to the business data, right? So I was in a session yesterday um, where we were sort of going through, I think there were seven or eight Cloud Foundry customers, all with very different use cases. Um, but the one similarity that, that they all had was they were connecting to their core, their core systems, they're connecting to their core um, back end. So, you know, we, we believe to, to build this bimodal promise, you need to connect um, to the core business data. But you then need to, if you like, do that in conjunction with this agility layer, with Cloud Foundry as, as that business platform as a service. This is much more than just integration or development capabilities, right? I know Gartner and others like to talk about IPaaS and APaaS. This really is about business platform as a service. It's about having the comprehensiveness of API so you can get access to the content. It's about decomposing industry and line of business expertise into microservices or into business APIs that you can reuse so that customers and partners can build these new use cases, these extension use cases, much, much quicker. So the agility layer needs to be done in the context of that, of that stable core, those stable systems. You need, I think, a diverse set of customers, right? I mean, you know, I, I touched on that every industry is, is being impacted. Um, so, you know, you need it, you, as, as developers, as partners, you need to know that there's a, a market opportunity to go after. Um, so you need to build on that. You need to leverage the fact that the platform needs to be open. It needs to be standards-based. We would love to commoditize um, the infrastructure layer, right? So infrastructure should become a utility. Um, and then the value becomes uh, the business capabilities and, and the business APIs that are made available through the platform. And that's how we differentiate. But we need to take advantage of the ecosystem, right? Digital transformation is a platform network orchestration business model, so you need those partners. The challenge we have and the challenge I have is that all these partners are going through a transformation, right? Traditional partners at SAP were resellers and systems integrators. They all now need to build IP. They don't all have the skills and the capabilities to build product, um, and that's where we're sort of going through a re-education process to, to retool almost the ecosystem to deliver against that, that transformation opportunity. And then we need to extend to new ecosystems. And this is part of the discussion we will have with, with Stefan and, and Bern, which is how do we start to bridge IT and OT, right? So back into, we're in Frankfurt, Industry 4.0, IoT is a hot topic. How do you start to, to bridge the gap between IT and OT? The benefit, if we can do this, is we can help our customers um, either co-innovate or innovate on their own, but ultimately reimagine, reinvent, and run differently, right? So digital transformation is about rethinking those legacy business processes and now doing stuff in a new way. You cannot do that um, if your product development cycle is three, five years and you have 10-year ROIs, right? This is a big difference, big cultural difference for SAP because you know, we're not always known for that sort of agile type of, of, of innovation and capability. Um, but this is, this is what we're, we're, we're driving now. This is the core message and the strategy to, to customers, which is we now can give you that opportunity using Cloud Foundry um, to, to reimagine, reinvent, and run, and, you know, run in, a, run in a new way. But we can't do that on our own. We need to do this with the ecosystem because the pace of industries is changing too quickly that one vendor can't do this on their own. They need to leverage the power of the, and diversity of the ecosystem. And because of that, the business models are changing, right? Our business model is changing, right? If you, yesterday, you would have thought of SAP um, as a monolithic um, application vendor. 
Um, but really to be successful, we have to shift our business model. We have to shift our partnering model to drive that value for customers. And we need to do that in the context of a platform business model. Um, so, you know, how do we bring in new customer use cases? How do we bring in new data sources? How do we transform the ecosystem to, to take advantage? If we can't do that, we'll not deliver that business value um, to the customer base. So on that, I want to flip from the presentation to Fireside Chats. Um, Bern Isler from Atos, um, who's responsible for sort of digital innovation and And Stefan Stang, who is uh, responsible for, for Mindsphere, um, which is uh, one of our customers um, of HCP Cloud Foundry. Um, and what we wanted to do was, was, was run through this slide and sort of do some Q&A around this one slide. Hopefully, this will work. Um, Stefan, to kick us <coughs> off, this is your slide. Um, so can you explain a little bit about maybe you know, the type of OT customers some of the use cases that, that you see specifically for Mindsphere and, and how we bring IT and OT together. Thank you for the introduction, Mark. Uh, first of all, this sh picture shows our vision, what we want to accomplish with Mindsphere. Yeah, Siemens is pretty strong in building industrial devices, uh, knowing how these devices are built, knowing the data models around these devices. And with this ecosystem based on Cloud Foundry, we want to enable our end customers, our machine builders, our partners, and certainly ourselves as Siemens to put applications on top of this. Let me uh, give you some examples here. Uh, today we already have uh, applications, for example, in process control industries, where we uh, using a data collector to trans, um, transmit control loop information and then providing in an application on top for our end customers just in dashboards how is the performance of their control plant really is and they can take this information and optimize the entire plant. Okay. We, we also have applications what we call for example drivetrain analytics where we increase uptime <coughs> of motors, inverters, yeah, in gearboxes, so these are typical industrial assets all over, you find it in all over industries, you know, pipelines, um, process control again, whatever. And with such applications, we provide a huge benefit. But there's um, another interesting example. Just a couple of months ago, we released a device, what we call connector box. It's an industrial, a small industrial device completely included with encryption and security for an end-to-end -end communication to the cloud. And this is uh, made as a business model for machine builders. Mm -hmm. These machine builders can use this uh, to develop their own digital services without any programming. So you can, within a couple of hours, you can integrate this in your machine, uh, connect this to PLCs, and have all the data in an application running in the cloud. Okay. This is uh, how we see this, uh, how IT and OT comes together. Perfect. And, and Bernd, in terms of Atos's perspective, I mean, what are you doing to, to bring IT and OT together? Mark, so from our perspective, we are partner here from, from Siemens since many years and around Mindsphere now, obviously hosting the whole thing. But our focus is obviously bringing the IT world and the OT world together. So we're basically creating uh, one of our first apps we're going to put out is a manufacturing dashboard really taking the machine data really from the dirty machine, the mm -hmm. sensor data via Mindsphere, and then bringing them together with, let's say, PLM, MES, other manufacturing IT data at the fingertips in the shop floor, basically. So okay. that is now a, opens up a huge amount of, let's say, real-time data, but also historical data, which allows a much more powerful, uh, up-to-date situation on the machine space in the shop floor. OK, so really using your domain expertise in discrete manufacturing and using the data that's being generated and collected from, from yeah. some of these IoT devices and, and rethinking some, yeah. some business problems. From our perspective, we also talk, always talk with the customers per domain, really per use case, basically. What is exactly the problem you try to address, which is different in retail with smart vending machines versus uh, uh, manufacturing with Siemens on the OT side? or then utilities, basically. So we always start with the, with the, the use case, what, what type of problems do you really want to solve? Okay. 
So, you know, we, we touched on, you know, platform is much more than application build and integration. You know, in the case of IoT, it, it really becomes almost a, a data orchestration layer. Um, Stefan, in, in, in your perspective, what, what, what does that mean in terms of potentially business model change and, and what are maybe the steps that we need to go through to actually deliver against that sort of business model change? So, the business model change is certainly the most important part here. I mean, we cannot continue as we did uh, in mm -hmm. the past. So, we see this in that this will probably happen in three phases. Okay. Yeah? Right now, since we started, we are more in a phase for our industrial customers to provide them with transparency and, uh, as I already mentioned, with uh, increasing uptime of assets. But once we go forward, I think in the second phase then, with all the data we now collect uh, and we can now combine and run data analytics on top, we are then in a phase where we can provide real optimization to our customers. And then in the third phase, I'm sure we are really able to provide complete new business models like running as a service for almost everything then. Okay, so okay, so we need, we need the transparency first in terms of what the assets yeah. are doing. We can then hope to optimize them, and then we can think about transforming the business model and, and, and potentially going to outcomes-based or as a service type business. Absolutely, it always starts with transparency, and for great. many customers, this is already a, a great value today. Okay, and, and Bern, with Atos, what, what are you doing around big data and... Yeah, I mean, one, one thing is that like this, this now with Cloud Foundry and, and, and Mindsphere and HCP enables us a, a very fast, let's say, application creation. So very mm -hmm. fast, you can show that it really works. But then secondly, fast is not enough so that we can bring this, this data which we generate uh, immediately from the OT side together with the, uh, let's say, manufacturing IT or enterprise IT and bring it okay. all together. And that is now, I think, a capability which was not available in the last couple of years. It's now available and you can do very rapid application uh, prototyping, realization, see if it works. If it doesn't work, you throw it away, create a new one. So that enables a much, much faster pace of innovation, continuous innovation for the customers here. Okay. So, I mean, I, I think that sort of leads on to the whole sort of point around sort of domain expertise, right? I mean, at the top of Mindsphere, you have this ecosystem as well, um, you know, from, a, from an OT standpoint, um, you know, are there any sort of big trends that, that you see or, or any sort of key capabilities that you want to, to deliver? I mean, certainly we, we really want to enable our customers yeah, and our OEMs and partners to easily use such an ecosystem mm -hmm. yeah, and benefit from this ecosystem and and provide applications or new business models and um, uh, digital services on top of it. So this is clearly something which is completely new in the past. I think we, we always did run um, yeah, our own developments and now we have to open it up and, and partnering more okay. and, and really leveraging also the entire community for developers. Okay. And, and Bern, you know, we, we, we touched on the expertise, Atos's expertise in, in sort of manufacturing, but you also have expertise in utilities and, and other industries. Is there an opportunity to also bring those different industry sort of clusters together and, and get some shared value or some shared business value across the different industry yeah. types? That's actually an interesting point which we see happening now that uh, obviously you start a very specific domain, let's say manufacturing, see what you can optimize. But very often they, they do also have some problems which we already address maybe with retail customers. Mm -hmm. So really some aspects of business processes we look outside, specifically outside of the specific domain and see if there's lessons learned from other that's right. the utilities area. So that's an interesting trend now that first of all, obviously you stay within your domain, try to solve the problems right. at hand, but then it allows you now to look over, let's say over the border and see what, how, how maybe retail has, has uh, addressed these problems in the past, right. and then apply those lessons learned. And, and this is something that, that we see as well at SAP. You know, our business model has been very focused on, you know, 25, 26 different industries, but very specific capabilities, right? Almost silos across industries. And now what we're seeing is, we're we're seeing, you know, how can we help uh, an oil and gas company benefit from financial services or retail best practice and basically bring this as an agile application um, to that customer so that they can really get some kind of system of differentiation or system of innovation. And that's, that's the value of the platform, right? That ability to, to, to re-architect or re-orchestrate on an, on, on an ongoing basis. Um, 
I mean, just just finally, agility. Um, you know, what 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 does agility mean for for you, Stefan? <laughs> this is certainly an important topic for us. I mean, coming from a traditional world of uh, waterfall development and having product managers planning releases two to three years in advance, we we started more than two years ago with a, with this transformation in our company and see the typical German engineering culture doesn't typically not allow any uh, failures, mm -hmm. but we really established a culture inside our development and product management teams, learn fast, fail fast, so that we are now in a mode of um, having B-weekly sprints, uh, having backlogs, uh, priority driven by a product owner, and this uh, really helped us here to, to speed up with our de development and innovation cycles. Okay. And just, I mean, finally, I mean, I needed to get this in for Sam. Uh, Multi-cloud um, is, is clearly important. Bern, from, from your perspective, what, what's the benefit of, of multi-cloud? I mean, multi-cloud classic for us is we can, you know, uh, work with the customers, develop those apps. They run on SAP, HCP with manufacturing. Obviously, we focus on Mindsphere. With retail, also, uh, many customers want it on private cloud. So basically, any cloud variant you want, basically, with these apps, with the Cloud Foundry capabilities, we can enable. Perfect. Okay, so just to, to wrap up, um, you know, as I mentioned, we, we very much see um, digital disruption as this as this uh, ecosystem uh, requirement. The value of connecting to the stable core, connecting to your existing business processes, extending those, and, and rethinking them through um, agile innovation on on Cloud Foundry. Um, but ultimately, the value is in the ecosystem and, and being able to for the ecosystem to really to adapt and respond to changes to drive that that customer that customer value. So on that. Stefan, thank you. Bern, thank you. And have a good day, everyone. Thank, thank you, you, Mark. Thank you.